Using custom domains with Office 365. Hey everyone, Ben Finkel here. Yeah, it's great that Office 365 gives you a domain name .onmicrosoft.com that you can use for all your services and your communication, but hey, most of us have a custom domain we want to use, right? We've got a branded domain name, mycoolcompany.org or myawesomecompany.net. Whatever the case is, you can associate that custom domain with your Office 365 tenant so that emails to mycoolcompany.org come in through Office 365 or, or communications through Skype with Business are done with a user at mycoolcompany.org. Making that association between your Office 365 tenant and the custom domain just takes a few steps that we want to walk through now. I've opened up my web browser to portal.office.com so that I can log into the Office 365 admin panel. And the first thing I'd like to show you when I select the user that I'm going to sign in as, notice it's CBT and Superuser at cbtnuggets2016.onmicrosoft.com. Now, if you recall from the provisioning tenants nugget, CBT Nuggets 2016 represents my tenant name, and the full domain, CBT Nuggets 2016.onmicrosoft.com, represents the default domain name that was granted to me when I create my tenant. Every tenant gets a .onmicrosoft.com domain name that is always there and cannot be removed, and you can always choose to use that. But of course, this nugget's all about using a custom domain. We want to set up our custom domain. And one of the things that's important to understand is that custom domain is going to change potentially the username that you use to log into the system. So first let's log in as this user. And this user, as the name implies, SuperUser, is the global administrator on this account. So I can pull out my menu uh, flyout in the upper left hand corner and choose my admin panel. And then I want to scroll down on the left hand side, uh, open up the settings flyout, and look at the domains. Now I've got, like we just talked about, the custom tenant domain name .onmicrosoft.com set up as the default. I also already have a second custom domain associated with this tenant, cbtnrocks.com. What's interesting about that, if I come back here to my users, let's select active users, and let's just look at the cbtn super user that we set up. We can edit this user, and notice I already have cbtn super user at cbtnrocks.com set as an alias. So either of these usernames, the at um, default tenant name or the at custom domain name are an alias for this user and if I change this alias to the primary if I click set as primary look at what it's telling me here warning you are about to change this user's sign-in information effectively what it's saying is if I when I do this when I set it as the primary I'm now going to have to use at cbtnrocks.com to sign in to office 365 let's actually go ahead and do that I'll click save changes and the information has been updated so why don't we go ahead and sign out of this account now. Browse once again to portal.microsoftoffice.com, portal sorry. Notice it still has remembered my old tenant name here in my, uh, my form. But when I try to sign in as this user, we don't recognize this user. Why not? Well, because I changed the username. I actually am going to say uh, back here, use another user account. And now it's going to be CBTN Superuser at CBTNRocks.com. That will allow me to log in to the account. Another important thing to note here when I pull out my admin panel. is that I had a second user listed here. Notice there was a Benjamin Finkel user. That user is still using the old tenant name. So not every user has to use the same custom domain. In fact, this is true not only for logging in, but it's also true for services like Skype for Business. We can set up a different domain for the different services so that our users are identified by a different username on these various services. I'm going to show you how that works right now because, yeah, I've got two domains set up here in this account, my default tenant domain as well as my CBT and Rocks domain. We're going to add a third domain. Now, maybe it's obvious, but of course, you cannot add a domain to your Office 365 account unless you own that domain. You have to prove to Office that you own that domain first. So I do not own Microsoft.com, unfortunately for me and my bank account, uh, but I do own CBTOffice.com. I purchased that a little bit earlier. When you set up a custom domain on your account, you can select the Add Domain to add that domain to this account. And there's one neat thing here. If you happen to use GoDaddy as your registrar, Office 365 is integrated nicely with GoDaddy. GoDaddy is a very popular web registrar, by the way. And you can set this all up very, very easily. I did not. I used one called Network Solutions, another very popular one, but not one that is um, set up through GoDaddy.com. So when I add my custom domain here, cbtoffice.com, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to manually add these records in my domain um, DNS settings. 
Now, unfortunately, this particular process is going to change from registrar to registrar. So if you're using one and one or you're using really any other registrar, it's going to be a little bit different. But all of the domain registrars that you use give you the option to set up these records in your domain settings. I'm going to show you how to do that in Network Solutions. Again, if you're using GoDaddy, you would get a, a button here that you could just click, and Office 365 would automatically put those values in for you. That's kind of nice. I'll have to log in and set them up myself. I'm going to do that at netsol.com. Regardless of which service you use, you want to find the place where you can edit my domain names. And under your domain names, you're going to find a place to set up your DNS records for that particular um, domain. So here's cbtoffice.com, and for this particular provider, I'm going to choose Edit Advanced DNS Records. Pretty much any provider that you're using, you're going to find some variation on this theme. Underneath your domain name, you're going to find out where you can edit advanced DNS records, which includes, like it indicates here, AMX CNAME text and service records. I'm going to select that and uh, nope, skip this little promotion to purchase something. And here are all the different domain name service records. Now, if we come back to our Office Admin Center, here's what it was telling me. I need to add a new text record that is either at or skip it if it's not provided, a text value of this particular um, this particular thing right here, which I'm going to right click and copy, that's going to change to, uh, for you when you're setting this up. And then the TTL should be 3600. So scroll down and find out where I can set up my text records. Click edit. Here's my at TTL 3600. My text should be that right there. Click continue. Save changes. So now I've got the text record there, and what I'm basically doing is validating to Office that yes, in fact, I own this domain. How does it uh, know I own this domain? Because I've been able to access it at an admin level and set up this text record. Now having clicked verify right away, you'll notice, uh, at least on my screen, it didn't work. And one of the things it says, if you just added this record, please allow five to 10 minutes for the change to be replicated through the system. So, you know, it can take a little bit of time for this change that I've made, this addition of the record, to actually get propagated across the, the wider public internet. I'm gonna try again here since I let a few minutes pass. And there, that seems to work. Notice now I'm moved on to the next step, which is set up my online services. In order for all the Office 365 services to work, say Skype for a business, or to allow Exchange Online to receive emails that are sent at your custom domain, you got to set up a whole pile of DNS records. Or, as another option, you can take over DNS hosting from your registrar. They both work. You can do either option. If you want to set up those DNS records in your registrar yourself, you can choose I'll manage my own DNS records. If your registrar is GoDaddy, once again, you'll have a button to click, and it'll just push the appropriate records out to GoDaddy for you. Or you can pull them into cbtoffice.com by saying set up my online services for me. Select this option, click next. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell me the options or the records rather that I need to add to my registrar. What's awesome here, once again, if it's GoDaddy, a single button click will provide this service for you. But if you don't have GoDaddy, probably the top you know, 20 or 30 uh, providers are listed here in step-by-step -step instructions. So they already recognize who my registrar is and I can click this step-by-step -step instructions link to get the specific instructions for your registrar. I'm going to walk through on NetSol. It's basically the same on anyone, just like before. Notice here that what I need are new name server records, ns1.bdm.microsoftonline.com, two, three, and four. So it expects me to have those four name servers indicating who my DNS host is going to be. I'm going to come back to NetSol and go to my domain names again. And this time, instead of advanced domain records, I'm going to change domain name server. So here, you can see that right now it's using uh, ns43.worldnick.com. I'm just going to replace these with the uh, Microsoft ones that they wanted me to put in. So it was one, two, three, and four. And I will click continue to update my domain name servers to those. Apply changes. And once again, this is the sort of thing that can take a few minutes to propagate. But having done that, I'll come down here and click the Verify button again. It'll tell me if it's happened or not. Nope, not yet, so I'm just going to wait a few minutes. There we go. After about uh, five minutes, it says, Congratulations, your domain and email addresses are all set up. So I click Finish, and yeah, here on my domains page, now I've got cbtoffice.com is one of the domains that I can use. I can now go and set this as the default domain. I can update all my users to use cbtoffice.com for their login if I would like. Uh, I can set Skype for Business to use at cbtoffice.com as the identity for my Skype for Business users. And I can set up emails to get sent to cbtoffice.com.
So that concludes this nugget on using custom domains with Office 365. Just to recap, of course you get a .onmicrosoft.com domain name whenever you set up a tenant in Office 365, but you probably want to use your cool branded custom domain with Office 365. In order to create that association, you have to A, verify ownership over the domain name, which you do with a .txt record inside of your DNS registrar. And then secondly, you have to set up a whole bunch of different DNS records, which you can do manually in your registrar, or you can take over DNS hosting from your registrar by updating the name servers like we demonstrated. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.